Blue Island is a highly industrialized, blue-collar suburb on Chicago's southern border. The city is ethnically diverse, with about half of its residents identifying as Hispanic and about one quarter as African American. While the industrial history of Blue Island has led to hundreds of brownfields throughout the city, there are beautiful homes and neighborhoods and a strong sense of community pride. People who live in Blue Island love Blue Island and they're working together to create a health-focused revitalization plan. When the city began to address brownfields, they focused on ways to address health effects of these sites on the community. They adopted a community health focus to drive their overall revitalization plan. Projects included turning brownfields into greenfields by increasing community gardens and access to healthy foods, and increasing opportunities for recreation. At the same time, local health providers and the city began an educational campaign to protect people from lead exposure related to brownfields and an aging housing stock. Now let's meet some of these people that make Blue Island so special and hear their stories. Good afternoon. My name is Domingo F. Vargas and I'm the mayor of the city of Blue Island. I welcome you to our community, Community on the Hill. We have a population close to 23,000 here in the city. It's a very diverse community, both economically, socially, and politically. And we welcome you to this beautiful town on the hill. Blue Island goes back to the 1830s, and it was probably a trading post for settlers coming into the area from the east. Blue Island, <clears throat> we're on a glacial ridge. It's about six miles long, and this is the end of the ridge. It was formed when the last ice age ended around 12,000 years ago. So as the settlers would come from, let's say, Ohio, the east, eastern states, they would come around the bottom of Lake Michigan, and <clears throat> this was a real swampy, low area. However, the ridge rose out of that, and it was heavily forested, and there would probably be a haze around the trees, hence the Blue Island looming up on the horizon. The city of Blue Island estimates over 400 potential brownfields in four and a half square miles. That's the size of the city with a population of about 20,000 people. Essentially, brownfields are everywhere throughout Blue Island, which is hard to imagine when you see me here at Phase Point, which is a lovely uh, retreat in the middle of the city. In Blue Island, a diverse group of individuals called the development community are using the action model to integrate community health and redevelopment plans. There are four steps to the action model. Step one, what are the issues in the community? Step two, how can redevelopment or brownfields revitalization address these issues? Step three, what is the corresponding community health benefit? And step four, what data are needed to measure change? In other words, what is the indicator that can be tracked over time of community health status? The development community in Blue Island is very diverse. It's comprised of residents, nonprofits, and different organizations. It includes the City of Blue Island Department of Development, the Metro South Medical Center, the Park District of Blue Island, the School District, community gardeners, and a variety of residents and citizens who really care about Blue Island and how redevelopment should go forth. I'm Gita Rampersad and I'm the founder of the Blue Island Community Health Coalition. In 2011, I worked with the city of Blue Island and used the ATSDR's action model to leverage federal funds in order to drive change around community health improvement in the region. Our first step was to establish a community health coalition. This is a coalition that serves as the official public health advisory body for the city and its partners as well as serving as the ATSDR's action model steward. When they formed the coalition, I believe I was one of the original people they asked to come to the first meeting, uh, along with other leaders of the community, people from the hospital, from Pronger Smith, from the Park District, the city, et cetera. And it's grown into a, an organization that's promoting, I would like to say, healthy eating practices and also improving what is sold in the local stores. Not so much fast food, but fresh fruits and vegetables, 
and teaching families that this is the way that they should be eating. So it's a wonderful program. I'm Jody Prout, Brownfields Program Director for the City of Blue Island. We currently have about 12 community gardeners, which is great because last year we had only four, so we've increased many. Um, we also have about three or four core volunteers. We have a, a one Healthy Communities Corps member who is an AmeriCorps that's focusing on food access. Now we have a community garden with food bank plots in an official USDA food desert. This garden is, has been um, leased by two local restaurants and they'll be, they're growing tomatoes and tomatillos and they'll be making a salsa this summer that is with stuff from the, our garden and actually promoting it that way. Uh, that garden over there with the large tomatoes is a future foundation that uh, they're doing service learning for youth. Um, we have food bank plots that are the four by tens over th there. Um, we're donating produce to the St. Benedict's food bank, or food pantry, and it's distributed to about 150 families that are in Blue Island and Robbins. One of the projects that grew out of the action model and is being spearheaded by the Community Health Coalition is the expansion of Blue Island Senior Services Program. The Salvation Army was one of the founding members of the development community and continues to champion the action model process through the Community Health Coalition. I met their newer facility here in Blue Island, which includes a complete recreational facility with a climbing wall, exercise equipment, and a basketball court. They have a teen room specifically for Blue Island's youth and a very active senior activities program which includes the senior lunch program. Here seniors can come for a $2 healthy, nutritious, balanced lunch. In addition, the Salvation Army has engaged seniors by starting a rooftop garden here at the building which helps feed the senior lunch program. The Salvation Army partnered with the local transit system in Blue Island to improve transportation for seniors throughout the city. The Salvation Army serves between 60 and 70 seniors a day for lunches. Some of them it's their only meal that a day that they have for the day. The cost is $2. It's $6 if they take a carry out. The reason it's cheaper if they eat in is because they want the, the seniors to have the social aspect of socializing with other people so that they don't become shut-ins. The seniors can use the, uh, the gymnasium to walk around in to shoot some hoops. Um, and we do have an exercise program here that it's free to the seniors um, and they have a bingo program that's twice a week that the seniors do come and play bingos and they get a free coupon for the lunch, uh, for a free lunch is what the prize is. I want to introduce you to Joseph Martin. He's one of our pro most prominent seniors. He lives down at Senior Suites and he's done a lot here at the Salvation Army. He's done, set up our, our aeropotics, I believe he calls it, um, plants you can see in the back here and um, he's going to show you more about them and tell you about them upstairs. This is an aeroponic tower garden and sometimes people confuse them with hydroponics which is using dirt and water but this is aeroponics you use air and water. What you have here is we have called net pots here. We have a 20 gallon container at the bottom <clears throat> which you put in the fresh, you put in the water, let it set for 48 hours, then you put in the nutrients. There's a pump in the bottom that sprays it up to the top, which creates like a mist. And the mist come right down, and the, the roots are hanging within the chamber. You spray 15 minutes of mist, mist in the roots, then you have 15 minutes of, of air, which dries it in. Which normally, plants grow, you water a garden, and it's soaked up in the morning. This, you get nutrients every 15 minutes and 15 minutes of air, which means the nutrients go directly into the plant, not into the soil and so on. That's why it grows so much faster. And when, it, when it's properly done, you can harvest the plant about every six to seven days. That can be anywhere from uh, leaf plants to cucumbers to zucchinis and so on. On average, seven days from one time it's harvest, the memory in the plants will let you harvest again and again and again. So it's, it's future growing. And it was designed by Tim Black, who did it for NASA. And I was taught directly through Tim Black how to do the system. Hi, my name is Jane Healy, and I'm here with the Blue Island Bike Club. 
Uh, I'm a community representative, and our community has done all sorts of exciting things over the last few years. Um, we've been able to do things like encourage the bike club. We've created a safe routes to school program that allows kids to bike and walk to school in a safer, more equitable fashion so they can get there where they need to go. Uh, we've been able to have Kaboom come out here and help us build two playgrounds where we had well over 280, I think we had close to 300 volunteers both times. Uh, we've had healthy hotspots that have opened up in our community where some of our local little corner stores now carry fruits and vegetables that they never did beforehand. It was just junk food and uh, candy. And that has been a real nice expansion in what we've been able to do in the community. Uh, the Community Health Coalition is a way that the community is able to share information and we're able to strategize on ways we want to move forward and other ways that we can improve what's going on in Blue Island. Hi, I'm Jason Berry. I'm a planner for the City of Blue Island, historic preservationist, and most importantly, I live here in town. Being a historic community, many of the homes in Blue Island are built before 1970, and most of them before 1940. So as a community, we have concerns about lead-based paint and the effect that has on our residents. Also, with our industrial past, we have a number of metal recyclers in town and continue to be worried about brownfield concerns. Because of these concerns with historic buildings, the City of Blue Island wanted to reach out to our contractor community. We hosted renovation, repair, and paint certification training, so we were sure that our building contractors were doing this in a safe manner. Hello. Hola. My name's Octavio. I'm the Director of Operations here at the Blue Island Park District with the Executive Director, Bob Manthai. Hello, I'm Bob Manthai. Early on, the Park District was involved in developing the action model for the City of Blue Island. Part of that was the development of over 100 programs and activities when originally we had only 12. Some of our evolving programs include uh, swimming, lifeguarding, and water fitness. It's pretty exciting to see that the kids enjoying our pool can uh, build skills that will help them stay fit for the rest of their lives. We have 13 locations in town, various parks throughout the city, Memorial Park being our main park, where our pool is located, our uh, hall for our indoor programs such as uh, yoga, art classes, things like that. We've got a great stadium over in Hart Park, and all the other parks have very good playgrounds as well. Two years ago, we were fortunate to win two Kaboom grants to rebuild two of our playgrounds. It was a great activity to be involved in because many of the uh, residents came out to volunteer to actually help build the park. One of the parks, we had over 250 volunteers. The second park, we had over 300 volunteers come out and help rebuild the parks. So I'm very proud not only to work here, but to live here in this community. Hi, I'm Sandra Wilkes. I'm a registered nurse, and I am the Executive Director of Community Relations and Marketing at Metro South Medical Center. I'm also the administrator for grant funded programs. Metro South was part of the action model. Actually, we were part of the founding members of the action model and we are still active members in the community health coalition. One of our innovative programs is to provide education and training for our medical assistants so that they can provide health education and screenings in our community. I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce my partner, Jose Garibay, who is one of our medical assistants. Hola, I'm Jose. I'm one of the medical assistants who works directly with the community. We provide free screenings for lead, diabetes, blood pressure, and other health endpoints. MetroSouth is very excited about remaining an active member in the Community Health Coalition as we move forward in bringing our community to health. As a businessman, I've been a business owner here for a dozen years and I ran another business for 14 before that, I think that our strength is the smaller family owned businesses that are unique. Not big box, not cookie cutter chains or franchises, but really our strength is the small family owned businesses. And I would like to see more of that. In other words, unique destinations. Hola. I am Leticia Vieira, Alderman of Blue Island and an employee of Metro South Medical Center. We hope our Community Health Coalition gives other communities ideas to improve their community health. 
For more information, please check out our webpage or our Blue Island newsletters.